Okay, today we're going to start Pei Vav Amid Aleph. Bar Shabin Beis Chatzeris. It's a Mishnah. Um, a little under half halfway down. Bar Shabin Beis Shabin Shtei Chatzeris. There's a pit. Uh, it has water in it. It's a well, a cistern. It's in between two courtyards. I should pull up a picture right away. But basically, there's a... Uh, there's two courtyards, and there's a circular. Uh, I'll pull it up in a moment. You can't fill from this bar on Shabbos. Unless you make a, a, a separate wall just for this pit. Let's pull it on. So, okay. Here's our story. Here's the two courtyards. And that's the pit that's in the middle. Now, there's a wall there anyway. We're going to learn about that wall. But that apparently, that wall doesn't work. It's called a mechitza tluya. It's a hanging wall. It's hanging over the pit. It doesn't help, according to the Tanakhama. Um, so what do you need to do? What it says you need to do is you have to put a wall in the actual well itself. We'll see more exactly what's going on here. But meanwhile, that's our that's our story. There's no Erev. That's the issue. There's no Erev in between these two properties. So when you're taking water, you're really taking water from the other, other Rishos. So wh- where do you put this? It says, It could be that you do it from Malmata. The Gemara is going to explain what Mamat is. Or you do it from within the rim. Means maybe it doesn't need to touch the water. Anywhere with under the rim, under the, the, the uh, surface, the top surface of the of the bar, that's going to be good enough. Rav Shimon Ben Gamliel, Rav Shimon Ben Gamliel, he says, it's not so simple. Uh, it's unclear if Rabshim Megumil is arguing on the Tam- Tanakama or he's explaining the Tanakama. Whatever the case is, he's adding in some details here. He says it's not so simple. Bishama Yaim, he says, really a machlaikas. Bishami says, Mulmata, that you can make the the, the wall Mulmata from below. And Basil Emir Mulmaila. Basil says that you make it above. Now, I'm not explaining what Mulmata is, what Mulmaila is, because the Gemara is going to have two opinions. And We'll see in the Gemara what, what he's referring to. I'm Rabbi Huda. Rabbi Huda says, You're making this little partition in the well. You have a wall on top. What do you need? Uh, uh, anything else? Rabbi Huda holds that that wall that goes across the whole courtyard, it's called Mechitza Tzluya, that that's good enough. He holds Mechitza Tzluya is considered a Mechitza, as opposed to the Tanakhama that holds it's not. It needs to be Mamash in the... Okay, now we're going to have the two opinions of what it means below, the wall below, what it means the wall above. And um, to Machlaikas between Rav Huna and Rav Yehuda. I just want to make sure we don't get confused between Rav Yehuda, who's going to be explaining the Mishnah, and Rav Yehuda, who's an opinion in the Mishnah. Rav Yehuda is a Namaira, and he's arguing with Rav Huna, Pshat in the Mishnah. And Rabbi Yehuda is Rabbi Yehuda Rabbi Lai. That's an opinion in the Mishnah that says you don't need anything. Okay, so let's go. Omar Rav Huna, the Gemara says, Lamata is Lamata Mamish. I don't know why Rashi does this, why, why he has to, what's compelling Rashi to translate it different than the way the simple reading is, but Rashi says, Lamata, when it says below, it means mamish below, that means it's touch, it's it's very close to the water. Because it's not in the it, not on the bottom of the well, it's close to the water. He calls it Samach Lamayim. It's close to the water. Lamaila, what's above? Lamaila Mamish. Oh, that's a, above. That's similar to the that's close to the top. Close to the to the lip of the of the pit. Both of them are in the pit. Let's take a look at what we're dealing with. 
here we have that machitza that's in, in it. Only look at these two pictures right here. Okay, after that, we, we're going to get confused. So this is Samach Lesfasai, that's Lamaila, and this is Lamata. Both of these he calls Lamaila Mamish and Mata Mamish. Okay. Okay, let's go a drop further. I'm going to leave the picture up. For Rav Yehuda, Rav Yehuda has a different explanation. He says Lamata is Lamata Menamayim. Okay, that's an easy one to imagine. You have it deep in the uh, in the water. It's next to the karka, the, the floor of the pit. That's that's what it's what it means. Lamaila, what's Lamaila? Lamaila min amayim. That means it's close to the top. Samach lesvasei. It means it would be in this picture over here. Ignore everything except for the one on this on the left. This one over here that's raised in the water. Okay. Okay, there's other sheetas that he's throwing around in here in this picture, but uh, okay, that's what we'll, that's how we'll learn it. Amalei Rabba Barav Chanan Labaya, Rabba Barav Chanan says to Abaya, Hodam Rav Yehuda Lamata Lamata Menamayim. When Rav Yehuda says Lamata, he means that it's below, deep in the water. Maishna Lamata Mamash Deloi. Oh. To go back in one point, to go back in one point. We learned that Lamaila was this one over here. Rashi actually doesn't do that. Rashi, Rashi says that it's this letter above. That's the Lama, that's the Lamaila. And what Rashi says is that Rav Yehuda's Lamaila is Rav Huna's Lamata. Follow that. Now I know it's protruding a little bit into the water. That's based on a Gemara the Gemara shortly. But meanwhile, that's the same uh, opinion. This is the Lamaila for Rabbi Yehuda, and this is the Lamata for Rav Huna. Anyway, Rav Hanan, Rabbi Bar Rav Hanan asks Abaya, when we discuss Rabbi Yehuda, his opinion, he says that Lamata Mamash, if it would be this, this was Lamata Mamash, that was Rav Huna's opinion. That doesn't work. Deloy. Um, it doesn't work for this opinion. Why does why does that not work? for this opinion. He's concerned because the water, what does this opinion hold? The one that says Lamata. He says that the water needs to mamish be separated because when you're going to put your um, bucket in, okay, you're going to put your bucket in the well, you're going to be taking from the other person's water. So therefore you have to actually divide the water. So why are we saying over here that for this opinion that that doesn't work if it's above the water? Let me tell you something. What's the problem over there? Darivi Maya, because the water is mixing below and it's not working. Maya. This one also doesn't work. The water is mixing. I know you put the uh, fence in the water, but you didn't divide the water. You just put a fence on the bottom. It's both of them are symbolic. So if it's symbolic, why? If it doesn't mamish separate the water, so what's the difference? That's what he's asking. Amalei. So Abaya responds, you don't hear what Rabbi Yehuda Marav says. And what's it means then? Could be it comes from Rabchia. That's not what it doesn't, uh, it's not just a, um, a machitza that's on the bottom of the water and the water's above it and no one can see it. Uh, that's not what it means. It means that it needs to protrude above the water one tefach. That is a very serious thing. That mamish needs to be dividing the water. So in other words, the way you understood Rabbi Yehuda, yeah, you're right, you have a question. What's the difference, this and this? But that's not what we're referring to. We're referring to that it has to protrude above the water a tefach. It's, it's mamish dividing the water. Vesu, and also, hadam Rabbi Yehuda, lamayla, lamayla, when Rav Yudha says that Lamaila means above the water like this, let's say like that. 
right now we, we think it's a mamish above the water. We don't know that it's in the water at all. So let's say that's the, above the water. What's the difference if it's up here that it doesn't work? According to any of them. Why the Arivi Maya? Because the water below mixes. Even if it's this, the water below mixes. What are you telling me that this works, but this doesn't? The water's mixing anyway, even in this one. You, what, what, how much better is this than, than this? How much better is picture two than picture one? Ignore the Aleph and this. <laughs> Okay. So Amalei, he tells them, It has to go into the water one tefach. So even this doesn't really work. It needs to be like this, like the Vav, over here, that it goes into the water one tefach. Now, the truth is that that's also a heker. So, in other words, there's only one opinion over here that holds that it needs to really divide the water. According to Rav Huna, the whole thing is a hacker. Question is where you put the hacker, up here or down here? According to Rav Yehuda, the opinion that says Lamata, which is Basil, it's, it's much more than a hacker. It's mamish going all the way into the water. And according to the other opinion that it's up here, so that's uh, just the hacker. But it's a hacker that actually goes into the water. It's a hacker means a, uh, uh, something that makes it recognizable that you did something here specifically to divide the water. Okay, let's go to the next picture. Rav Yehuda says that a beam that grows, goes across a broken down house, a chorva is a... Um, ruins so you have a beam but it's more it's more than a beam it's a a board that goes across and if that board is for tvachim so then you can carry under that board even though the roof collapsed but you still have one beam that goes across now rashi learns that why are you allowed to ca carry on it Taisvis learns it, that it's Pitikra Yard Vesaisim. I think it could be that's what Rashi means also. Pitikra means when you look at the edge of the board, it has a width to it. When you look at the edge of the board, there's a width to that edge. Now, that could be the beginning of a wall extending downward. So, because that width is a tefach, so that's called Pitikra. The mouth of the roof, which means the edge of the roof, extends downward. That's what he holds. And you're, that, hence, you're allowed to carry under it because you're basically in an area that has mechitzas. What are the mechitzas? I mean, it's uh, halachic mechitzas. But it's um, maybe you have the walls on the side and you have the, the uh, two walls in the front and the back that are fictitious walls, imaginary walls. But Rav Nachman Amar Rabba Baravua, and Rav Nachman says the name of Rabba Baravua, his father-in-law, Kaira Arba Materes B'mayim. A beam of four Tvachim allows you to carry under, it allows you to use the water. Let's take a look at that. So here we have a beam that goes across. This allows you to carry, or to take, let's say there would be, um, two courtyards here. You'd be allowed to take the water from under it. And it's not considered like you're taking from your friend's courtyard. It's like there's a mechitza. Similar to what we said by the ruins, that it's like there's a mechitza. So he asks, The problem is, is that the bucket is going to the other side when you drop it in. And when you pull it out, you're taking from the other side. You don't really have a mechitza there. It's a fictitious wall. So why, how does that help? 
So the Gemara answers, Kimlu la Rabbanan de Indali Mahalach Yesim Arbet Tvachim. The rabbis know that the that the bucket doesn't extend more than four tvachim, so it's not going to go past that board that's going over the the center. That board itself is four tvachim, so the dali is not going to go over. It's going to drop down. It's, it's going to drop more straight down. The Gemara says, "But tachas kaira miyaharivamaya." Even if it's under the board, but the water is mixing. You're taking from where the water is mixing. The we have leniencies when it comes to water. We learned about this before. Mamish leniencies with water. What are the leniencies? Kedaboimine Rav Tavla, Merav, Rav Tavla asked Rav, Machitza Tluya Mashatata Bechorva. Can you use a Machitza Tluya in a Chorva? If that was the case that we had before, he asked him, Does this help? Or that's not really the Mechitza Tliya. Mechitza Tliya is. Mechitza Tliya is this, is a, a wall that's only on the top. Here's the Nasukka. But a wall that's only only on the top part. Yeah, we, it doesn't didn't go we, all the didn't way we learn this before a few days ago? We had this once before, yeah. Yeah, also the boat we said, I think. Yeah. when they were getting water from the ocean. Right. Yeah. right. So in that case, uh, our, the original case that we had today was a mechitza tluya that we didn't hold of. This was a mechitza tluya. Should a mechitza tluya <clears throat> work in a churva? So he says, It only works by water. There's a leniency that when it comes to when it comes to water. Now, um, I don't think Rav is actually paskening that this mechitza works. I don't think he's saying that. Rashi over here says, Velesel the Rav Yehuda Elke the Rav Huna. I don't know if you see that Rashi. It's the the fourth line in my Gemara. The Beiselo Lamaila Mamish Kami. Could be Rashi has a different girsa. Whatever the case is, he's allowing, according to Rashi. The conclusion of the Gemara is that I can have um, I can have a mechitza right there in the in in the bar, and that's going to work. Okay, that's our story. <laughs> Talking about taking water out of a out of a well that's shared by two um, two neighbors, and they didn't make an eruv between them. That's what we're discussing. How do you put a fence up to show that the water is yours? So we had um, several opinions. And in those several opinions, we had a machlekas, what the opinions were. Well, well, this result is consistent with what we learned a few days ago about creating a, a box or a shaft underneath yeah. a platform that right. lets you lower bucket into, I don't know what it was, the ocean or a river. So I guess what we're ending up with is even though there's an ownership issue here, which wasn't there, end up with the same result. It's, it's, it's right. a symbolic extension. Right. Over there, there was a, a slight difference. Over there, we were taking from a Carmelis and we were bringing it into a Rishos HaYachid. Over here, it's one Rishos HaYachid to another Rishos HaYachid, but it's just the halachas of Erevin that are, that are bothering us. We have to we have to figure out a way that the other person's that it's not a double it's not a joint uh, ownership here because there's no eruv between them it's not a common area we have to make it that each one has his part so but there was a rishuyis issue is it can you take from the Carmelis? and over here it's not a rishuyis issue it's a it's an ownership issue it's a, you know the, it's a hilchas erevin okay. Next piece. I'm Rabbi Yehuda Leite Mechitza. Rabbi Yehuda's opinion was that a hanging wall was good enough. What was the hanging wall? It was the wall that went across the chatzah. It was anyways a wall between the chatzah. Be careful with such a wall. This didn't look like the safest uh, situation. What did he have over here? Yeah, you can imagine people sharing a swimming pool like that. That, uh, yeah, it looks a little dangerous. 
So, but Rabuda holds that that's enough. That uh, that wall above is enough. We're going to discuss this opinion, and it's going to come a discussion about someone that builds a sukkah. Someone that builds a sukkah like this. This is also a hanging wall. Yeah. So let's see. Amr of Yehuda, leite mechitza, that the wall of the courtyard should not be any worse or better. Should not be worse than the wall that you're building, the little, um, the, the mechitza that you're building in the well should not be any better than the wall that's above the well, than the real wall. Amar Rabba Barbarchana, Amar Rabbi Yechanan. That's very common. Rabba Barbarchana says the name of Rabbi Yechanan. Rabbi Yehuda, Bashitas, Rabbi Yesi, Amra. Rabbi Yehuda that holds that a hanging wall works. He follows the opinion of his friend Rabbi Yesi. Rabbi Yesi is Rabbi Yesi ben Chalapta. Rabbi Yehuda is Rabbi Yehuda Rabbi Loi. Both of them are students of Rabbi Akiva. The Amar that Rabbi Yesi says, Mechitza Tliya Matera Safila Bayabasha. He holds that a Mechitza Tliya works even in dry land. Where does he say that? The Tanan, stood in the Mishnah. A Mishal Shal Defanas Milmailamata, if someone is lowering a wall, the way it's explained is that he's weaving a wall. So what he would do is he would start on the top and he would start weaving the wall going down. So I guess he puts string back and forth. It sounds like a difficult way to do this, but that's what he's doing. It could be that the way he's doing it is he's using the poles to be able to be part of his weave. So he's like wrapping around maybe the poles, but he, where did he start to wrap it around from? He started to, to, to wrap his string from the top. So what does the Bach do to this? In Gavayas, in Gavayas, in Psula. The Tanakami here says that if you don't make it to the bottom and you have it raised above the floor, three Tvachim, it's going to be possible. The reason for this is, is that if you need a halachic wall, it's, it's not a real, it's not a wall. There's no wall there. You, you can't have a fictitious wall that everyone just walks through. So what we're saying is, is that if you have a fictitious wall, so you have a wall ten tefachim, it's coming out, it's a wall, right? But it doesn't go to the bottom and I need the bottom to be, I need, I need it extended to the bottom. So I need halacha to tell me that it extends. I need halacha to make, you make an imaginary wall. The only thing is, is that my imagination, it gets uh, disproven every time a goat uh, goes under it. So it's not going to work because the goat can go under three tefachim geometry. It can uh, it figures out how to how to make its way through. So the, it's it's not a real wall. It's even, even the halacha doesn't apply to that. Nimata lamaila the other way though, im tefachim. If you started to weave the wall from the bottom and you make the wall and it's moving its way up, it gets up. So once it's ten tefachim, no one can go over the 10th Fahim wall, the animals don't jump over that. People don't walk over 10th Fahim walls. So then I can say that the wall continues upwards. That's the, yeah. That's the first opinion holds that Mechitza Tluya doesn't work. 10th uh, uh, Fahim is a wall, but it needs to start on the bottom. If you start the 10th Fahim on the top, it doesn't work. Rabbi Yaisi Kshem Shemul Matalamayla Sara. So too, it can go down 10 tefachim. In other words, both of these, according to Rabbi Yaisi, is going to work. Both of these sukkahs are going to be kosher. That's Rabbi Yaisi's opinion. Rabbi Yaisi accepts both of them. The Tanakam only accepts this one. This is a mechitza tluya. And Rabbi Yaisi says it's fine. Okay, the Gemara is now going to have a, um, a discussion about this. First, the first discussion is that we're claiming that Rabbi Yehuda that holds that the wall that tra- goes across the courtyard is considered a good wall, even though it's not in the well, it holds that Mechitza Tliya works. He follows the opinion of Rabbi Yaisi that holds by a sukkah, Mechitza Tliya works. 
the first discussion is, do they really agree? They're both talking about two separate things. I mean, we can compare them, but if you look at it carefully, they're not, they don't necessarily agree with each other. It says, Vulaihi. They don't, they don't agree with each other. Rabbi doesn't hold like Rabbi Yaisi. What, what are we saying? Rabbi Yudha holds the wall that goes over the courtyard. He won't hold it by a sukkah. It's going to work. Why not? He was so lenient over there. He said, you don't need a wall in the pit, in the, uh, in the bar, in the cistern. That, when does he say that? He said, yeah, that's a Ruvi Chatseris. That's a rabbinic law. Look, it's not a different Rishos. It's both Rishos HaYachid. The rabbi said that if there's going to be a common Rishos HaYachid that looks like a Rishos HaRabim, you really need to make an Erev. You didn't make an Erev. Okay, so we're going to have to divide it in half. So we'll divide it in half, but that all of that is rabbinic law. So any division that you're going to make is going to be good. A Mechitz is also going to work. However, Abel Sukkah Dei Raisa but the sukkah that it says in the Torah that you have to build a sukkah, light over there we're going to say that you need a real wall. Mechitzot isn't a real wall. It's not a rabbinic uh, law. It's a daraisa. Okay? Makes, it's very logical. Rabbi, Rabbi Yaisi Savalak Rabbi Yudin, Rabbi Yaisi that says that it works in, when it comes to, to Erevin, he says that I can, that, um, Rabbi Yaisi that says that it works by a sukkah, that a, a hanging wall works He's not going to hold that it's going to work by Erevin, by the wall that goes over the system. He says that a sukkah is a positive command. Okay. If you neglect the positive command, you, you didn't fulfill the mitzvah. It's not a strong prohibition. It's just a positive command. You just try to do as many mitzvahs as you can. So, okay. However, Abel Shabbos, this is Skilahu Layama. But Shabbos, Shabbos, you don't mess with. He's not looking at which aspect of Shabbos this is. He knows that it's in a Shulchan Aruch in, in Hilcha Shabbos. <laughs> yeah, I know when you get it into the nitty gritty, it's a rabbinic law. But he says, no, the rabbis made laws in Hilcha Shabbos similar to the Arises, called the Tikkun Rabbanan Ken the Arises Tikkun. We have to take the rabbinic laws under the category of Shabbos as strict as a daraisa. So when it comes to, now we, all we're doing is comparing two daraisa laws. So the law of sukkah is more lenient than the law of Shabbos in a general context. So therefore, even though uh, Rabbi Yaisi holds that it works for a sukkah, but maybe it doesn't work for Hilcha Shabbos to have a hanging wall that goes over a sister. Because when it comes to the laws of Shabbos, they need to be stricter. There's different ways of looking at it. The Imtaimar, the Gemara has a question. This question is based on, um, they call it Jewish geography. Who was the rabbi in Sipari? It was Rabbi Yaisi, Rabbi Yaisi ben Falakta. We're going to say now that we know of a story that took place in Sipari, and it had to, had to do with the laws of Shabbos. And Rabbi Yaisi allowed him, and we don't know if it's Rabbi Yaisi. And they allowed a mechitza tluya. Who was the rabbi in Tzipari that allowed it? It must have been Rabbi Yaisi. What are you telling me that Rabbi Yaisi only says his mechitza tluya by sukkah, but he doesn't say it by Shabbos? In Tzipari, there was a story in Hilcha Shabbos. And they allowed a mechitza tluya. Who could it have been? It must have been Rabbi Yaisi. Right? This is like, um, uh, it was in New York. <laughs> it had to be Rabbi Sonsa. Right? So, okay, then Taimar, I say, I say, but Spire El Pinasa, who did it? According to who was the heter that they were allowed to carry based on a mechitza tluya? Layal Pi Rabbi Yaisi. The Gemara says, well, how do you read this? It says, Layal Pi Rabbi Yaisi Nasa, El Al Pi Rabbi Shmuel Bar Rabbi Yaisi. It wasn't Rabbi Yaisi himself. It was, yes, it was in Tzipari, but the Rav at that time was not Rabbi Yaisi. The Rav at that time was Rabbi Shmuel Rabbi Yaisi. It was his son. And his son didn't agree with his father. His son was more lenient. Well, allowed it even by, um, even by Shabbos. His father allowed it for Sukkah. He allowed it for Shabbos, similar to Rabbi Yehuda's opinion. Okay. El al-Pi Rabbi Shmuel Nasser. The Chiyasi Rabdimi. 
when Rabbi Dimi came, Amar, he said, we, we didn't discuss the story yet. Now it's going to come out with the, what, what exactly happened. Apparently, they didn't leave the Sifri Torah in the shul. They left the, the Sifri Torah in a, in a residence, in a house next to the shul. They didn't want to leave it there. No one was there. It, was, it, was, it wasn't safe. So they would put it in the house nearby. And before Shabbos, they would bring it over. One time they forgot. So the following day, there was no Sefer Torah in the shul. So they hung cloths over Amudim, over posts. Let me show you what that looks like. Sounds like a clothesline. Here we have the picture right here. What we're dealing with this here, there's a whole courtyard. Now, really, you should be able to carry a Sefer Torah from here to here. What's the problem? From this house or from this house. Make an error. They didn't have an error. So what happened was it was closed off one house together with the shul. The shul itself doesn't need an error. There's no diurin in the shul. There's no one living there. So if I can divide this courtyard in half, then this court, this area only belongs to one person. So he's allowed to move a safer Torah from his house to the shul without these people interfering with the common area. There is no, this is a common area, you're right, because there's two people living here. But in this area, there's only one person living. So if this is closed off by a wall, so then he can take the Sefer Torah from his house into the shul. The only thing is, is that what type of wall is this? So if you notice here, you made a picture, it's a mechitza tleya. There's cloths hanging over it and it doesn't reach the floor. It's not a real mechitza. However, Rabbi Shmuel, Rabbi Yaisi, that's what we're saying now, allowed it. So, says like this, and they brought a Sefer Torah because of those mechitzes and they read from it. The Gemara says, are you allowed to spread cloths over on Shabbos? Now the truth is, is that it's not so clear that this is really Yasser. This is an oil arai, it's a temporary oil. Uh, it's not going across the top, it's only going on the side. So it's unclear, however, Take a look at yeah, this picture. Here he makes a, the problem really much more serious. Yeah, let me show you this. If you can see that. You see over there? Here he's spreading the cloth over two posts. It's not one post. He spreads it over two posts. So then. He spreads it over two posts. So then it's real oil. Then it's an oil that's, um, that's a tent, not just a, a mechitza oil. That's, that becomes more strict. Okay, but either way, uh, either this is an opinion that's, uh, um, that an oil arai is aser, even if it's just a wall. So, everyone agrees that you can't make an ayal aray on Shabbos. Ella, so the Gemara explains. It's not that they made it. They didn't do it on Shabbos. It was already there. They, I guess they hung up the, uh, the sheets or tablecloths before Shabbos um, on the clothesline. And they walked outside and said, hey, what do you know? This looks good for us. There's a mechitza already here. And they were able to carry. Not that they put it up. Parsu. It doesn't mean parsu. Can, can, can it mean that they actually had the this made up mechitza already hanging in different positions, and they just moved them into a line to make a mechitza? Oh. oh, that's interesting. So they were all let's say lined up on the side of the wall, and they yeah, just that's interesting. So they were all ha hanging already. That's very interesting. I don't know. That's a, it sounds like a good pshat. If that's the if that's the uh, if that's the pshat, then it's a, a nice hatter. You move mechitzas around. Yeah. We could fix the erev <laughs> with the portable mechitzas. How do you get it there? Okay. So how would they how would they move the mechitzas around? 
That's a, that's the question. How could they move the mechitzas? If they can't move anything in the chatzar, maybe things that are in the chatzar itself, it's not a problem. The problem was taking out of the chatzar. There's different opinions. From Shimon, from Shimon's opinion held that from chatzar to roof, and I'm not sure. Okay. I'm a, I'm a a new uh, case. We we resolved our issue because we said it wasn't Rabbi Yehuda, it wasn't Rabbi Yaisi that himself that said it. What did, it was. We, what did we learn about um, Rabbi Yehuda Imer Yesh Tfisa Siad? That he had objects in the yeah, Chatzar. That was the last Mishnah. Right. So, can't it, so can't it be that the these are the items that are already there, happen to be Mechitzas? Uh-huh. If that's the case, the Tfisa Siad would be would be would be no problem carrying at all if there would be a tvisas yad in in each of the houses but no. maybe only for you one see, person it's not necessary yeah. for everyone and anyone else that lived in that chatzar would ruin the um the common area he would be icer because he didn't participate in the area right right and then the courtyard becomes a problem I guess the other option could be Yimavakal the Rishos or whatever. There's, there's other ways of doing this. But anyway, this is the way they did it, and they used the Mechitza Tleya. Okay. Amar Rabbah. Rabbah says, Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Hananiah ben Akavya. Rabbi Yehuda and Rabbi Hananiah ben Akavya, Amr Davarecha, they said the same thing. Rabbi Yehuda had Amr. Rabbi Yehuda is in our Mishnah. What does he say in our Mishnah? That a mechitza works, a uh, mechitza tliya works. And Rabbi Hanani ben Ikavya, the Tanan, or the Tanya, it's supposed to be the Tanya, there's a Brisa. Rabbi Hanani ben Ikavya, Rabbi Hanani ben Ikavya says, this is, uh, Rabbi Naftali takes us back to uh, what we were discussing before with the platform, with the whole, with the uh, getting water out of uh, out of uh, ocean or, uh, or water. Reservoir. He says, Guzustra Shiesh Barba Amis Alar Bamis. If I have a porch, Guzustras, these boards that are uh, on top of Zizim, poles that are sticking out of the wall, and it's sort of like a platform. So, Chaykik Ba Dalit Al Dalit in Mamali. I have to show you a picture because else it's not going <laughs> to. It's quite a Gemara here. Okay, let's see what's going on. What you have here is okay. This is our this is our Gzustra. Okay. If you want to take a look at the actual picture, let's see. No, we don't have a good picture of the actual thing sticking out of the wall. Um, I guess you're just gonna have to imagine that there's a door or there's a window here or something. Um, that's coming from a different Gemara. But anyway, how big is the platform? It's four Amis by four Amis. What does that do for me, the four Amis? So each Amma is six Tvachim. That means that this is 24 Tvachim. Four Amis times six is 24 Tvachim. 24 Tvachim by 24 Tvachim. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make a hole in it, four Tvachim in the center. That's going to leave me 10 tvachim to each side. 10 tvachim here, 10 tvachim here, 10 there, and 10 there. Why? Because it's 24. So I remove four and I have 10 to each side. All right? So that's, if you divide it in half, it's six on this side, six on that, and I take two off from each. So um, it will be 12, rather, 12, 12 on each side. And then I take two off from each, it would be four in the center and 10 on each side. So what I'm going to do now yeah. Yeah. is I don't, I didn't set up a machitza. All I did was make a hole. What I'm doing is I'm, I'm, I'm imagining that the, the sides are folding downwards and becoming a machitza for the hole that I made. It's again, it's an imaginary machitza that's going down. And why do I have an imaginary mechitza? Because my floor is a, the size that would allow for the for it to fold down and become the mechitza. 
look at the picture. Yeah, I think he's trying to represent that that the it's a lot, these um, these areas are folding downwards. Ten tefachim are folding downwards to become a ten tefachim mechitza to to reach the water. You should be able to get it out. Okay, what are we saying now? That's Rabbi Yehuda that holds that a mechitza tzliya works. Holds the same thing of Rabbi Chanani, Rabbi Chanani ben Akavya. What does Rabbi Chanani ben Akavya say? That a mechitza tzliya works because the boards fold down and and they uh, hanging above the water. And you can get the water out. Amalei Abaya, Abaya says to Rabbah, Rabbah is the teacher of Abaya. He says, how do you know that really Rabbi Yehuda holds the same like Rabbi Chanan ben Nekavi? He's saying something much more than what Rabbi Yehuda said. Rabbi Yehuda just told that you extend the wall downward. Good means a wall. Aches means down, like nechois is to go down. Mechitzta, a partition. You extend the wall down, it becomes a partition. Avol koif, a good light. But who, how do you know Rabbi Yehuda holds that you bend the, the floor to turn the floor into a wall, and then you also say, good aches mechitzta. You're, you're adding another another uh, theor- another uh, opinion over here that Rabbi Yehuda never mentioned. And also the other way. Where was Rabbi Chanani ben when he said that? That was the Yam Shel Tveria. Kineret. Hayel V'yesh Oignim. First of all, the Kineret itself has high walls around it. I mean, it, not walls, but it's the, the it's deep enough that the ed, that the edges of of the Kineret should be considered itself a wall. Va'ayares, and there's also the city, the Karfifais, Makivis, I said, this parks that are surrounded with with um, mechitzas that are all around it. So therefore, really, meikar adin, you don't need anything here. He was telling you that, okay, you don't need anything. Okay, we'll have a hole in this uh, platform. And together with this kaif, with this bending of the of the floor, we'll, we'll be matit. Well, Bashar may mislight, but how do you know he's going to say that this is going to be good? Mechitza tluya, even a mechitza tluya itself, is going to be good in, in other places where you don't have these heterim. Sometimes you combine other heterim together. It's called a sniff. A sniff lahater. There you go. This and that. A whole bunch of reasons. Each one itself is not conclusive, but you add them all together and, it's, uh, and it, uh, it gives you a heter. Okay. Amar Abaya. Abaya says, According to Rabbi Chanani ben Nekavya, we have something else. Remember, we were discussing a platform that's sticking out of a house and it's extending over a wall. The truth is, is that we have another way of doing this. And that means, let's, the other way goes like this. Yeah, picture's worth a thousand words. Uh, there's the Yamashal Tveria. Here's the picture that we're looking for. Let's say, this is very dangerous, but the platform doesn't go all the way to the to the wall. It's within three tefachim of the wall. So what Abaya is saying over here is that as long as the length of this is four amas, terukshi arka dalet amas, the length needs to be four amas. And then v'reichba, what's the width of it? Well, it's three tefachim there approximately, but v'reichba achadaser mashu. Don't measure from there, measure from here. This is 11 amas yeah, over here from this edge. 11 amas, all the, 11, I'm sorry, 11 tvachim across, 11 tvachim across, four amas this way. So 24 tvachim by 11. What are we gaining by this? So, so what you're going to do is like this. You're going to carve out one tefach over here. That's going to give you a four by four. We're going to use this wall. That's a bias chiddush. That I already have one wall. Now what do you need? I need three more walls. So this we said was ten tefachim. Used to be eleven, but I carved one out. 
So tentvach, and we said, is a wall. So I can bend it out, bend it down. According to uh, Rabbi Hanani ben Akavia, I can imagine that it bends down. Okay, but that's two walls. I have the back wall, which is actually there. I have a fictitious wall that's being bent down in the front. What about the side walls? So we said that this was 11 tefachim. That means that there's one tefach here that's going to be considered a wall because I can bend that down also. If I bend that down, that one tefach is within the lavud, is within the three tefachim of the wall, it's going to work also. So let me see if he has a picture of it, actually how it's bent down. That doesn't really help. Yeah, this is a better picture. Here, this is what you see what's happening. Here, you bent it down. There's one tefach that's over there. One tefach back, with, this is within three tefachim. One tefach on the other side, and this is ten tefachim in the center there. And the back wall works. Okay. Hey, says Kufa. Let's say it wasn't actually a flat platform, it was a hanging. It was a, a ziz that was going out. And at the end of the ziz, there was a board, uh, a board that was standing straight up. It needs to be 10 by six, 10 tvachim by six. What are you gonna do with this, with my six? It says like this. Um, six tvachim plus a drum. What you're gonna do is you're gonna bend it over one tefach on each side. There's a picture here. Here you have six tefachim. You have the ziz coming out. I can use the back wall. I have the zizin sticking out. The board is over here. I can. It's. A, I don't need to bend the, bend the board down or something. It's already bent. It's already straight up. That's considered a mechitza. What all I need to do is to bend one tefach over on, from that dotted line, one tefach over from that dotted line to enclose it, and then it's going to be considered that there's four walls. Let's see if he does it for us. Yeah, yeah, you did it for us. You don't need to think over here. He has the picture. Okay. And finally, Amar Rav Huna, Breder Rav Yishua, Hayesim Medes Bekeren Zarba, Tzarshi Yagayva Yud Tvachim Reichva Beis Tvachim Mishnei Masher. Here, if it's high, if you have the same thing, but it's in a corner, so then it needs to be ten Tvachim, and it only needs to be two Tvachim, because the two Tvachim themselves, I can bend one Tefach to each side. I can just, if it's two Tvachim wide, I just bend it, and then that one Tefach turns into to four tefachim, because that one tefach plus a mashu, it combines with the with the lavud, so it's three plus one in a drop makes four. It's minus three. A drop minus three plus one in a drop makes four tefachim. That's going to give me four tefachim. Well, I'll be able to use that to be able to get the water out. That was our discussion. Minus one second. One second. I have a problem. Based on everything that we said, we just contradicted the first statement. We said that there's a platform that's sticking out of a wall. We said it needs to be four amas by four amas. That was the first statement. Then we said that it really only needs to be four amas by, by um, 11 tefachim. And then it needs to be... Uh, uh, it needs to be 10 tvachim by 6 tvachim. Yeah, finally, 2 tvachim. What is the case that it needs to be 4 amas by 4 amas? It should never need to be 4 amas. I always have the back wall. I should only need uh, tops, 11 amas. What do, what, what do I need over there? 13 amas, 14 amas. I mean, 14 tvachim, 10, 10 tvachim or 14 tvachim. What, what do I need? It's you just bend it down and it's and and uh, and that's good, but there never needs to be 24 tvachim by 24 tvachim. So the Gemara says like this: Well, how the Tanya Rabbi Chanani ben Akavir Megzus Shishish bedalar Amis al dalar Amis Chik bedalar al dalar Umamale that you have to it has to be 24 tvachim by 20, 24 tvachim, which is four Amis by four Amis, and then you're able to fill. When is that? Hechem Ishkachas La. When do you need that? You always have the back wall. Gemara answers: David the Kiasita. You made it like. 
on va essayer de ça me, um, it's referring to something that's freestanding that anyone have an english with a translation mine's uh, in the shape of a mortar all right so the picture goes like this this is the only way that it's going to work is if it ha it's on its own on its own you see it has the piles that are going into the ground and that's when you'll need four amas by four amas. But if if it's ever attached to a wall, then you don't need four amas by four amas. All right. Let's see if we can uh, go a little further. Let's see. <laughs> Just another few minutes. Is that okay? All right. We're rushing. Good, Maisha. We okay? Okay. So amas amayim sheyveres pachatzer. You have a stream of water that's going through a courtyard. In Mamali Menabashabis, it's not good enough. Even though you have walls all around it, it doesn't work. Elam Kenaslam Machitza Gavaya Yotvachim Bechnisa Vitsia. You need to put in the in the ditch, in the uh, canal, you have to put a machitza there. I'll show you a picture. It'll go quicker with a picture. That's the water that's going through. And I even have a wall that's that's blocking off the courtyard. All I want to do is get to, some water out of there. It's not good. What do I need? I need to put a mechitza beknisa as the water is coming in, a mechitza into the into the ditch, and the mechitza beitzi as well. Okay. Um, the Gemara is going to discuss if it's only on one side or not. Rabbi Yehuda, I'm a kaiser shal gabati the mishum mechitza. Rabbi Yehuda's opinion, as we said before, was you don't need anything in the well. Mechitza tuloya works. Rabbi Yehuda holds that. Om Rabbi Yehuda, ma'ase ba'amas amayim shalavo, ba'amas shalavo. Rabbi Yehuda says it was a story with the stream in the city of Avil, shayu memalim mimena al pisa kenim b'shabbos, and they would fill it up. They would fill use it for they use that that stream. I'm alive. Pnei shalaya by kashir. That wasn't ten tefachim deep. By four tvachim, it wasn't considered a separate rishus. That's a different story. Here, the issue is that it's considered a separate rishus. The problem is that it's considered over here. We're not dealing with erevin. Here, Rav Naftali, we're dealing with a karmelis. Once it becomes a separate rishus, ten tvachim deep by four tvachim, then that's considered like an ocean or a, or a canal. It takes on a different rishus, and you're taking from a karmelis into rishus ayachet. So you have to somehow block it off to turn it into a Rishus Ayachid as well. So over there, what Rabbi Yehuda was, uh, his Raya, it wasn't a good Raya. Okay. I guess we'll have to stop there. <laughs> Let's try. Have a good day, everyone. Thank you.